Today, we're delving into the eerie and enigmatic world of Silent Hill Downpour. Released in 2012 by Konami and developed by Vatra Games, Downpour is the eighth installment in the Silent Hill series. Unlike previous entries, this game takes a bold step into the psychological horror genre with a new protagonist, Murphy Pendleton, a convict who finds himself trapped in the foggy, nightmarish town of Silent Hill after a prison transport crash. Unlike its predecessors, Downpour features numerous side quests that delve deeper into the lore of Silent Hill. These side quests are optional but provide valuable insights and additional scares for those brave enough to explore. The haunting soundtrack was composed by Daniel Licht, known for his work on the Dexter TV series. The game also features moral choices that affect storylines and endings. Murphy's decisions throughout the game influence the outcome adding replayability and a personal touch to each playthrough. Silent Hill Downpour may have received mixed reviews upon release, but it has since garnered a cult following for its unique approach to horror and storytelling. Whether you're a longtime fan of the series or a newcomer, there's plenty to appreciate in this atmospheric horror adventure. So buckle up and join me as we explore the twisted world of Silent Hill Downpour and uncover all the trophies you can earn in this spine-chilling game. <laughs> First off, I jumped into a blind playthrough and boy, after battling mother nature, I kept falling to my death while trying to cross this massive fallen tree. Ooh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Finally, after what felt like a hundred attempts, I managed to get across this giant ass tree. But just when I thought things might get easier, I ran into my first moral choice, a moment that could change the game's ending. Since I was playing blind and wanted to see how being nice would turn out, I decided to play the good guy. So when I came across an officer hanging off the edge, I thought, yeah, let's try to help her. Spoiler alert, it didn't go as planned. You know, you do stupid things, stupid things happen to you. Soon after that, I ended up in a diner that flipped my whole world upside down. Literally. What the hell is this? This is where I encountered one of the corniest chase scenes in all of video games. This red black hole looking thing started chasing me and I had to run away from it. The game mechanics reminded me a lot of Shattered Memories by knocking things over to slow this entity thing. And for some reason, this managed to slow down this entity of pure asshole. It's like the game saying, hey, let's make this super awkward and very intense for no reason. After escaping from this weird chase scene, I finally got my first trophy of the game and it was called Now You're Cooking. And I earned it for escaping the other world diner area. Oh, trophy. Now that I've managed to escape the diner, it was time to get the hell out of Silent Hill. My next lead was a sky tram that might just be my ticket to freedom. But because nothing in Silent Hill is ever simple, I discovered that the ticket machine had been ripped out. I ended up in yet another abandoned building, though let's be honest, every building here is abandoned in some way. Inside, I found my old busmate beating up by what looked like a woman. So the Wonder Boy Murphy came in for the rescue, but little did he know this woman was actually a full-blown monster. She ended up literally clawing Buddy's face off, ouch, and this was the game's introduction to enemies, and it was time for the game to make me its little b****. Silent Hill Downpour's combat system is pretty much its downfall, pun intended. Okay. And now I had to figure out how to fight, and let me tell you, it gets annoying fast. The enemies in Downpour can block and evade your attacks, and your weapons have durability. Not only that, but blocking also drains your weapons durability, and it is the most frustrating thing ever in this game. My goal was to find the ticket machine, but with my garbage sense of direction, it took me two hours to finally figure out how to get out of this area. Once I finally got the elevator working, I found some fresh drip and the ticket machine. I had to play a little mini game to win my ticket to freedom. Of course, I got my ass beat again, because fighting more than one enemy in this game is like fighting demigods. Oh, oh, oh god dang, I got... Oh, oh my god, I got not the combos. But after a lot of struggle, I finally got the ticket and rode the Sky Tram. This earned me my second trophy for escaping the boonies and heading to the Devil's Pit. Because for some reason, that sounds more appealing. Oh, trophy. The Devil's Pit, one of the town's eerie tourist attractions. This place isn't just for sightseeing though, it's where the game introduces one of its tougher enemies, the Weeping Bats. Oh my god! Honestly, I don't get why they're called bats, they look more like naked albino werewolves. And while they pack a punch, they're not the toughest enemies you'll face. Those real bastards show up much later in the game. 
The Devil Spit also brings another moral choice that can affect the game's ending. Here I met JP Sater, a former tour guide for the pit. His backstory is pretty grim, a tragic accident caused by negligence, leading to the deaths of like 8 children because he was drunk on the job. During my playthrough, I found Mr. Sater standing at the edge of the pit, seemingly ready to jump. The game gave me the choice to either talk him out of it or mock him. Mocking someone on the brink of suicide felt too cold-blooded, even for me. Since I'm playing as the good Murphy, I tried to choose to help him. Despite my good intentions, it didn't change the outcome. JP still decided to take the biggest wanton bomb that would make Jeff Hardy proud and jumped into the abyss never to be seen again. Shortly after this intense encounter, I managed to escape the mines, which earned me the going up the rails trophy for my efforts. Oh, trophy. Going off rails? The hell does that mean, dude? I'll wait for the sink. I just need to know what it is. Going off the rails, escaped from devil's pit. Wow, that was super late. All right, so now I found myself in a city and this is where the open world aspect of Silent Hill Downpour really comes into play. It's not the biggest map out there, but for a Silent Hill game, it felt like a lot. Unlike most open world games that guide you with waypoints and markers, this one doesn't really tell you where to go. So for a huge chunk of the game, I was legit lost. As I wandered around aimlessly, I got pulled over by what seemed to be a ghost cop car, and next thing I knew, I was jumped by enemies. Typical Silent Hill fashion, right? Come here. What is up with that car? I hate the police car. The cop car needs to go. After struggling with the game's combat mechanics yet again, I eventually stumbled upon a building where the cop cars were dispatched. This meant I could recall all of them and roam the streets more freely. Now the whole point of doing a blind playthrough is to experience everything without any help, solving puzzles, fighting items, and navigating the game entirely on my own. I didn't really know how to solve this particular puzzle the legit way. Maybe the clues were on each cop car, but who has the time to go around town checking each one? And since only one or two digits were missing, I ended up guessing the codes and eventually recalled all the cop cars, nabbing me the trophy. Trophy. There you go. After getting lost for literal hours, I finally figured out that I needed a specific weapon to bring down a ladder. I might have partially given up at one point because I was getting tired of going in circles and definitely didn't look up online on how to proceed with the damn game. <laughs> I knew there was going to be a forum for this. <laughs> You're telling me I really needed this pokey pokey stick to do that. And this brings me to the next side quest where I had to return stolen items to various apartment rooms. Not only did completing this quest earn me another trophy, but it also got me some fresh drip. Oh, trophy. Going into the next side quest located at the bank, this one was a real doozy because it required me to fight multiple enemies in what felt like a gauntlet match. Definitely one of the harder side quests because I had to defeat all the enemies to finish the quest. Oh my gosh. Oh my God, please stop. Why do you attack so much? Freak girl. Freak boy. But after a lot of struggle and some luck, I managed to pull through and got the Silent Hill Alarm Trophy for beating this side quest. Trophy. Silent Alarm. While roaming around town looking for all the side quests, I ended up earning three miscellaneous trophies. First, I got one for escaping from 20 monsters, which honestly, I did a lot of. Uh, trophy. Then I got another trophy for killing 10 screamers. Those enemies are a real pain in the ass. And lastly, I got the trophy for using 20 first aid kits. Given how tough the combat can be, I went through those pretty quickly as well. Oh, trophy. Eventually, I found myself heading towards the radio station. On the way there, I encountered a bunch of weeping bats. Now, these guys are tough, so I did what any sensible person would do. I ran away. Fast. Oh, no. Fudge, 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 fudge. Wait, oh! Oh! Oh wait! Oh my God! I'm getting, I'm getting this. I'm getting the smackdown. Press it. Press it now. Go go go! 
After spending another hour or two trying to figure out how to leave the library, I was introduced to a new type of enemy. These enemies are invisible, and you have to look for their main body to kill them. Ooh, there's an enemy. I was about to pop out of that glass. Oh god, there's two of them. I knew it. I knew it. What the hell? Whoa, 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 whoa! What the fuck? Wait, do I have to... Come here. Please. Please. Gotta heal up. Alright. Grab me the chair. My god, he's got a chair! My god, he's got a chair! Come here! Come here! Come here! Yep, that's right. A few puzzles later, I finally figured out how to proceed and ended up finding the DJ who was trying to low-key call me to his booth. Along with meeting him, I snagged another trophy, but our reunion was cut short because we got ambushed once again. Oh, trophy. Finding myself trapped in the building, the only way out was through the other world. So I manually started the fire to set off the sprinklers, leading to another awkward chase scene with that sucky sucky black hole thing. Escaping this earned me yet another trophy for getting out of the other world at the radio station. Trophy. After waking up from that chaotic chase scene, I was then introduced to head to a nearby church to proceed with the main story. But before diving back into the main quest, I wanted to finish off some remaining side quests around the map. Using the fire pokey stick again to bring down a ladder, I ended up in an apartment where I had to solve the mystery of what happened to the family there. The key to this puzzle was playing a gramophone that revealed a message. I had to play it backwards to uncover what went down in that apartment where the father ended up butchering his own family. To wrap up this quest, I had to burn the father's portrait and the trophy popped shortly after. It was a grim story, but a satisfying end to another side quest. That's crazy. Trophy. In the theater, I needed to collect three separate items to insert into a projector, which would then transport me into the film itself. Once inside the film, I stumbled upon the strongest gun in the game, a golden pistol. Now this thing packs a serious punch, but there's a catch. There's no way to get more ammo for it. But getting my hands on this golden beauty also earned me a trophy, which was a nice reward for my efforts. Trophy. Next, I earned a trophy for killing 10 prisoner minions. These guys are tough and put up a real fight, but after a lot of dodging and swinging, I managed to take down enough of them to pop that trophy. Oh yeah, you mind now? Yeah, how's the ground? You know what I'm saying? Pow! Hit him with that glitch, the, the glitch punch. That's what I call that. Trophy. The art appreciation trophy required me to find six pieces of art that eventually formed into a map. Following this map led me into a crypt, where I not only earned the trophy, but also found a tomahawk that I didn't end up using. Uh, trophy. Another trophy I earned was for finding five bird cages scattered around the map. The bird cages triggered flashbacks of Murphy and his son, adding more depth to the story. Trophy. Came out here just be freezing on me, bird man. The spot the difference trophy involved a really cool puzzle with a mirror. The mirror would show reflections and I had to match what was on the reflection. This puzzle was probably my favorite in the game. And what's better than solving a fun puzzle? Popping a trophy and finding two health kits and some ammo inside the mirror. Ruby. Will Work for Food Trophy had me doing a fetch quest for a homeless man. This side quest was super useful because it unlocked various shortcuts around the town, making it easier to avoid those pesky enemies. The quest was pretty straightforward, except for that one part where I had to give him a fishing rod. But the rod glitched out on me and I nearly had a heart attack because there's a trophy for completing all the side quests in one run. Thankfully, a quick game restart fixed the issue and I was back on track. It's here. Let's go. Oh, the restart worked. Well, let's do. Yeah, yeah, that'll do just fine. Go and show me that map one more time. Trophy. I don't know why my game keeps freezing every time that happens. For the dust to dust trophy, I needed to scatter ashes I found in an apartment at a nearby pier, which might be a nod to Silent Hill 2. Trophy. Then for the what's your sign trophy, I had to place a bunch of symbols in specific areas around town. Trophy. The Telltale Heart Trophy was by far the most intense experience I've had in this game. It required me to find a heart in the sewers where I'm surrounded by pure darkness, with enemies lurking all around me. Not knowing when they would strike, I did the smartest thing any sensible person would do. I ran for my f life. I don't like any of these. 
Homie, they're coming. Jesus Christ, wait. Wait. Ah! Help! Oh my god! Ain't no way! Hello! My dear friend! Run, god damn it! Run! Climb! Oh, the frames! The fr I'm stuck. Please! Please! First aid. Let's go. Oh, trophy. Lastly, I had to search for evidence about what happened to a missing child. And this quest ended on a really grim note. But it did end up giving me a trophy. And for finishing all side quests in Silent Hill Downpour, I earned yet another trophy. <laughs> oh, crap. Trophy. Silent Hill Tour Guide. Ooh, I got it. Nice. So that's all the side quests done. Now that I had finished all the side quests, it was time to head towards the next big destination in Silent Hill, the Church Hospital Orphanage Place. Honestly, I forgot which one it was. Here, I was told that Murphy's son had just recently passed away, and even though in the storyline he's been dead for years. So I went in searching for more answers. Inside, I found a child who looked just like my dead son, Charlie. This kid asked me to learn a riddle before he would open a door for me. So off I went again, like a dog taking orders from anyone at this point, to go and find this said riddle. Along the way, I managed to snag two more trophies though, one for killing 10 dolls, and another for incapacitating 20 enemies without killing them. Oh, trophy. Shadow Boxer. Alright. She is concussed. Wait. Oh, trophy! Save the execution, let's go! After breaking through barriers and using some serious black magic to turn a simple theater into a real life place, I finally found the last piece of the riddle. So I rushed back to the kid to recite the riddle so he could open the door for me. But of course, as soon as I got there, the raincoat killer, aka the boogeyman, showed up behind the kid. And I had one job, is to recite the riddle I spent hours figuring out. And what do I do? I fumbled every goddamn word, leading to the kid getting choked out. What the hell, Murphy? Poor little Steven Skelter. Susie knows you felt her shit. Duh, dumb. No more love for you. No more love for you to run. Uh, along with your skin splayed out from within. Uh, uh, once the monster has his fun. Oh God! Well, you are trash at this, Murphy. Take heed. It's not too late. Uh, his um, uh, mistakes need to haunt you forever. Uh, he's just a kid, you son of a... Uh... Then I went through some weird acid trip and ended up inside the morgue where a nun was standing over what seemed to be Charlie's body. But surprise, it was the boogeyman under the cloth. The boogeyman woke up, threw me into a wall, and it was boss fight time. Despite being an easy boss, I struggled a bit since this was my first playthrough. But after beating the boogeyman, I ended up earning another trophy and the key to the boat out of Silent Hill. Just when I thought it was over, Robocop over here forced me to go back to Silent Hill. And she did have a pretty solid point in going back, but also she has a gun. But of course, Murphy declined, resulting in her shooting him in the back. Now I was in the end game, back at the penitentiary, and also giving me a trophy. Trophy. Remember when I said the weeping bats were a pain in the ass? Well, meet the strongest enemy in the game, the Prisoner Juggernaut. These guys are walking tanks and not only do they hit hard, but they also run fast. If Konami had given these bastards a rocket launcher, they would have just been a bunch of bootleg nemesis ripoffs. And the next trophy required me to kill 10 of these Juggernauts too, so that's, that's fun. Oh my gosh. Ooh, yeah. Getting this trophy real quick, you know what I'm saying? Beep! Wow! Bink! I mean, that should be 10 already, right? That, yeah. Derby. And eventually, I found myself facing off one-on-one -on -one with Officer Pain in the Ass. 
leading to the final moral decision of the game. Depending on my moral score throughout the game, this decision would determine the ending I got. Since I played as the good Murphy this run, I chose the spare her option, earning me the forgiveness trophy. It's not what he'll do. Trophy! To avoid multiple playthroughs, I loaded my last autosave and killed her instead. Also having a good moral rating, this would earn me the full circle ending. Ending C. With my first playthrough done and dusted, it was time to dive into the game's version of Silent Hill's iconic UFO ending. Now it's not technically a UFO ending, but it's pretty much the same deal. To unlock this, I needed to dig up multiple spots on the map using a shovel. Once I dug up all the necessary spots, it automatically set my ending to ending E, no matter what choices I'd made during the game. This also earned me the useless trinkets trophy. Oh, trophy? After that trophy popped, I just needed to speed through the game to unlock my secret ending. But on the way there, I ended up snagging another trophy for killing 25 monsters with either a pistol or a shotgun. And three, I think. We're just gonna use all of it. It's fine. Oh, trophy. With that done and reaching the end of the game, I finally unlocked ending E. Ending E. For my third playthrough, I decided to go for all the bad endings along with any collectibles I missed and other miscellaneous trophies. To get the bad ending, I had to turn Murphy into the biggest asshole to ever walk the face of the earth. So I let Officer PTSD fall, taunted a guy who was literally on the edge, and basically went on the killing spree. While following a guide to find all the journal notes, I ended up killing 10 weeping bats and collected every journal entry. There we go. Trophy. There we go. Trophy. When I reached the end scene once again, I chose to spare the officer's life while having bad karma, which got me the truth and justice ending. Trophy. Then I loaded back in and this time I killed her, earning me the execution trophy. The saw one was like, <laughs> they were like, trophy. And for the final playthrough, it was time to tackle the game on the hardest difficulty while going for the pacifist trophy. Since I didn't want to fight anything in this mode anyways, it was the perfect time to go for this trophy. After finishing the game three times already, my plan was to speed run through everything while avoiding every possible fight. And let me tell you easily, the toughest parts of this run were the weeping bad encounters. Oh my, I forgot you were here. Please. Please. Why are you so fast? Wait, wait, please. Oh, yeah, yeah, better back up, homeboy. That's right. I'm gonna mess you up. I'm just kidding, dude. I was just playing, bro. Please. Oh my gosh. Like, how, why did you even pack up in the first place? Come on, dude. Come on, dude, please. Are you just gonna chase me at, like in the depths of hell, bro? Oh my. All right, yeah, that's right. You better run. I'm just playing, dude. Like, I want, come on, dude. Take, take a, take a joke. Take a chill pill, bro, please. I'm tired. I'm tired. I'm dead. Ugh. Murphy, if you can like run a little bit faster, like your life is in danger because it is, I would absolutely like that, dude. How are you still chasing me, bro? Yeah, that's right. Wait, 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 wait. Just get in. Just get in. Just get in. Just get in. I don't care. Come on. Oh my God, dude. That one part in the cathedral where the game spawns a bunch of enemies was a nightmare as well. I'm going to have to take it like a champ. Take it like a champ! Like a champ! Oh. Fuck. Super scent. Ow. Ow. 50%. Using the health kit. I'm out. And the elevator segment where I had to incapacitate all the enemies before the elevator would move again which was absolutely terrifying because sometimes Murphy does a critical hit that kills enemies with one shot and I really didn't want that to happen. Oh my goodness, I have 6% health. And lastly, everything about the penitentiary was a heart attack and a half waiting to happen. 
And surprisingly, I didn't die all that much. I even put up a death counter because I thought I'd hit triple digits, but I was wrong. Even one of the final bosses didn't pose much of a threat, which caught me off guard. But after all that, running for my life from beginning to end, I finally reached the end game and got the platinum trophy. You have like negative karma and you forgive her? Trophy. Capital punishment. Puzzle master. And the Rainmaker, baby. Let's go! Silent Hill Downpour might have lacked fun factors in terms of combat, but what it did right was nail the eerie feeling of roaming around the corners of Silent Hill. It's definitely not the best game in the series, but I still enjoyed my stay in the iconic foggy town. But I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Have you played this game yet? If so, tell me about your experience in the comments down below. And if you like this video, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe for more content. And I also stream on Twitch at Doco Bell. So stop by and hang out. And that's all for this one, folks. I'll catch you in the next video, and I hope everyone has a phenomenal day. Trophy!